Along the Pacific coast, the Energy Observer weaves its way between tankers in the port of Long Beach. It's a stark contrast, the rusty steel of the freighters against the shiny solar panels of this catamaran. There are different kinds of solar panels. The idea of this laboratory vessel is to test a bit of everything. We have bifacial panels with separated cells to be able to have some sunshine inside the ship. For three years, this French crew, led by Captain Victoria Nessera, has toured the world to test the efficiency of different renewable energies in extreme environments. This is a bad day, 100% clouds, no sun, so we can't produce anything with photovoltaics. This is where it's good to have hydrogen in the tanks so that in case of a problem, we start up the cells. The catamaran produces green hydrogen, which is made from water and carbon-free electric sources like solar and wind power. Green hydrogen in mass could solve a major climate hurdle by storing renewable energy. This is where we store our tanks. It takes up a lot of space, but it takes up less volume than batteries. For the equivalent weight, we have eight times more energy with hydrogen than with the batteries. The Energy Observer navigates in total autonomy, thanks to a hydrogen production chain integrated into the boat. This is the electrolysis, where the H2O molecule is broken down. Solar energy powers the electrolysis that separates hydrogen and oxygen molecules in seawater. The hydrogen is stored and then turned back into electricity by a fuel cell. This carbon-free process only releases water vapor back into the sea. The energy autonomy shows that we're able to do it, but only while maintaining low speeds. That's why the average speed of this ship is five knots. It's a bit like what we have to do on land, slow down a little in order to go much further. But while California is relying on green hydrogen to boost the development of renewable energies, so-called blue hydrogen still accounts for 80 percent of its consumption. Much cheaper to produce, it is called blue because it is extracted from natural gas and then decarbonized by capturing CO2 emissions. In 2016, Mark Mobley paid 50,000 euros to buy one of the first hydrogen cars available for sale in California. It's quiet. There's very few moving parts in a hydrogen or fuel cell vehicle. It's very fast acceleration like that, but that wastes hydrogen, so I don't do that very much. The state now has 10,000 fuel cell cars on the road, making it the second largest hydrogen fleet in the world. To refuel, drivers must head to specifically equipped service stations. Nearly 50 of them are spread out across California. It's not gasoline or diesel being dispensed, but hydrogen. Pump time is about 10 minutes, four times less than an average electric recharge. I rent an apartment, I don't own a home, so the hydrogen's more convenient because I can't charge up a plug-in electric vehicle at my apartment. With the five kilogram full tank, Mark can drive nearly 500 kilometers, but the price of hydrogen fill-ups remains expensive. It's about uh, $16 per kilogram. And for so for a full tank? Um, 16 times 5, $80. California is home to 90% of the hydrogen stations in the United States. But despite many more under construction, there are not enough to meet the growing demand. Something I noticed when I was filling up this morning is I didn't get a full fill. Does the uh, machinery know when to ration towards the end. You're absolutely correct. As we get lower in the volumes, we will see uh, some limited fills of the vehicles. The demand kind of came quickly. So as far as the industrial gas industry is concerned, we're responding as fast as we can. But the demand was higher than we had initially predicted it to be. A frustration shared by many drivers, including Will Martin. Two months ago, he made the switch from electric to hydrogen. But today, there is nothing to fill up with. It actually creates range anxiety because you don't know if you're gonna, when you're going to get fuel. We've literally had days where you have to monitor the app because every station within a 25-mile radius is out of fuel. So you, you think you're going to give it back? If I have this car by June 1st, I'll be surprised. As with any innovation, its development is perilous. At the moment, hydrogen is delivered by truck, but the goal of the future is a constant supply delivered by converted fuel pipelines.
In just a few years, California has become the country's hydrogen mobility laboratory. South Los Angeles has the first national fuel cell vehicle research center, and hydrogen's biggest promise could be the transformation of heavy transport, such as freight and aviation, away from carbon. Fuel cells have the advantage of fueling more quickly and having lighter weight so that you can carry more passengers or cargo or other things. And because of that lightweight, also the ability to go longer distances than batteries. Once production and transport costs are under control, hydrogen could power the homes of the future. A fuel cell like this would replace old school boilers. It produces it right at your home and makes hot water for you. So this is one of the ways in which we could decarbonize and reduce emissions in a zero emissions residence. And that's what we're studying with this. To couple this with solar, batteries, and fuel cell technology to make combined heat and power in a way that's a little bit different and more resilient than doing it with solar and batteries alone. But time is running out and California must combine new technologies and renewable energies to succeed in meeting the very ambitious goals set by Joe Biden, zero CO2 emissions by 2050.